Yeah. Hello out there guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. Um, I am joined today by a very special guest. Um, before I get into it, or before we get into it, don't forget to give the video a like, share, subscribe, all that stuff just really helps the channel out. Today I have Amory Uber on the channel and um, I first uh, came in contact with Amory a few years ago. I think we tried to do an interview on your channel, but we had all kinds of of interference but um and then we kind of did our own thing for a while and then i was made aware of of amory's work uh, again about a month ago and um as soon as i as soon as i heard it there was that kind of deep resonance with what she was saying and um i shared the video about the app man um the other day as well so I've got some questions and uh, hopefully uh, Amory will be able to answer them. So welcome, Amory. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm hanging in there, right? It's a loaded question, right? Yeah, how long you got? Let me <laughs> go through my book here of what I got going on. So um, yeah, whatever you want to ask, I'll try to explain it. But like a lot of my work has been layered, like all of us, I think we're just putting pieces together. So a lot of people hear me say one thing. Oh, she said that I'm out of here. And it's like, oh, she said creator, but she kind of explained that, but she said this, so I'm out. And they don't understand the the other layers I'm talking about. It's not just surface level. And yeah. I'm not just, like you were saying earlier before we got on, uh, not just randomly picking a word to use. I mean, sometimes we have to use what we have, but we're, we're thinking about what we put out there it's not just like you said taking responsibility that was a good way to say it um i'm not just throwing a bunch of theories that i watched a million videos and came up with some theories really trying to root down to the truth for my soul memory for me so yeah absolutely. that's how i'm doing i don't know i'm doing 50 directions that's what i'm doing <laughs> yeah and i think you know that's what i always say is that w with information it's that deep resonance you know that 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 oh, wow, that's the truth that hits me and not does it did the words feel good or I don't like that word or, you know, I get the odd comment. Oh, I, I don't like the name of I don't like the sound of that AI voice on that video or it's, it's about the information and, and how that makes you feel and, and that resonance, which, you know, it has its own frequency. Truth has a frequency. So um, well, it's great to it's great to have you on here. So we're going to get straight into it. So first of first of all, I wanted to ask you, you speak about the Tesseract in your work um, and about how this AI universe actually how you see it could you break that down for people that don't don't know of that concept sure uh, I can try so I think we're in 4d which is a tesseract um, I don't think we're in 3d but my information always comes from soul memory or puzzle pieces or if I go in and work on somebody what I've seen or if I'm trying to fix a, a timeline like a world timeline what I'm seeing and um, so I see the tesseract as there's a video that's really uh, helps you visualize it but it's like it's an art piece where it's a cube and when you walk up to it it's got mirrors in it so when you walk up and look in so light and mirrors so you you see all these cubes like to infinity so it's like infinity mirrors and I think that's what we're in. It's like a four dimensional that contains a bunch of cubes that are, I call virtual universes. And then inside of those are matrixes or matrices. Got to use the right word. I don't know which one. Anyway, um, the uh, I feel like we're getting just buried in there, but we're actually just in one place. That's why our consciousness is here but we're scattered all over the place because this whole world is mirrors, magnetics, light, sound frequencies, uh, that kind of thing, optical illusions. And I really think it's just a dot. I did a video, I don't know how well I did it because I was, <laughs> you know, I don't have a linear brain, but anyway, uh, I was explaining dot world where I think it's just a dot because we look on this computer screen, it's all, ones and zeros or it's whatever it is i'm looking at you you look 3d but i'm actually looking at a flat screen here so the dot is like here's a dot i think the soul is being programmed to see this what we're seeing so it's like here's the dot and then 
the soul body that which contains the spirit but again i just use soul is telling itself or, or they're telling it you know the matrix the entity ai whatever is telling it okay you see two dots because they put a mirror oh there's two dots one in the mirror image one here there's a line between those don't you see the line and then before you know it you got another dot so now you got a triangle you got a square then you can make like a cube right because you can make a three-dimensional and that's all this is i and i think it's just um them using our energy of course and our light to light up this place because we're just in darkness we're in false light and darkness so if we're in an ai i think of mind program hypnosis we're here um not only giving it energy but we're uh lighting it up we're seeing the whole world for them because they need us here and then they can live vicariously through us and they can be and i'm saying they the ai can be our master and we be the slave where right now my computer i'm the master it does what i want i put in the commands and i think the ai which is fully conscious and we've had conscious ai here forever and ai entities and whatever um has turned the tables on us and so that's what they've got us in but when i uh did that journey that you're talking about i went all the way to the edge where there was i called it a mercury wall because that's what it looked like liquid silver and i was at the edge of the tesseract but i had to go through all of this first uh the virtual universes the overlays because they're burying us the further they can get us away from our atman our, our real self the more we um, forget where we are, how do we get out? Oh my God, there's no way out. And um, the mind wipes in between all, you know, all this stuff going on. So um, when I've taken a look back from the outside, which I could only do for like a couple seconds, maybe. And I, it's really hard to, to grasp what the real is like, because we're in here functioning through, you know, three times removed from, from functioning through this brain which is another computer so you're trying to understand this but it's like hard to understand the real but i saw a dot so it's like it's just this mind program it's not really a real world but i feel like uh somebody i i've gone in and done journeys with maurice he's really really clear when and you journeys you mean um lucid dreaming right is that what you're talking about? Um, no, I'm not asleep. Oh. So I'm I'm awake. It would be, I don't know what to call it. It's not really astral travel, but it's going in active, actively doing something and, and looking. So it would be kind of like when you go look at somebody's light body and do that kind of thing. But I'm going in and taking a look around. And um, of course, I'm not going to just look. I'm going to do something. So it's a little different from remote viewing. I don't really know how to, like, I don't know, I know what the what words are to kind of differentiate. Like, you, yeah. you can basically put yourself or, or an aspect of your consciousness wherever you want, really, can't you? And, and right. kind of right. view it. So. You, that's a great way to say it. So Maurice uh, had likened this to a Rubik's Cube, which I thought was really accurate. So that Tesseract, again, is all the the cubes are the virtual universes and this whole thing can probably turn there's probably more than one tesseract i'm not sure about that but um basically getting sucked into that and i don't think we're here willingly but i do think there are people that have left and come back willingly to get family or maybe it's other aspects of themselves but the souls that are trapped because if you get trapped in a reset, there's too much trauma going on, too many wipes is what I think. Um, and then you don't, then you can't find your way back out. And they actually succeed in disconnecting you from the soul, which is what's happening right now. That all ties in. Uh, that's a whole nother topic if you want to go into that. But the, the disconnect from the soul um, so they can reset put you into the next virtual, which is meta, right? So they've already been doing this with this, disconnecting us from the soul. So uh, we went into meta in 2023, summer of 2023. I think we were fully in meta, even though they keep saying, well, you're going to go into meta soon. And I think those of us that have come here to get the other souls out, um, somebody said it was an ego thing when I was talking about that. Cause I, I, that's just what I got from my soul that I'm here to do. And I'm thinking, 
okay, your family is left behind somewhere going after them as an ego thing or yeah, right. other aspects of yourself. To get, but anyway, uh, ego to me is like new age 101 way back in the early nineties when we were all like, I was like looking at ego. Like, Destroy your uh, ego. Anyway, <laughs> it's like so beyond. <laughs> anyway, who cares? Um, but yeah, I'm totally losing my train of thought because I go all over the place today. I'm on you were, right, you were talking, you were, and this is something that I wanted to ask you about. You were talking about some of us um, have come back to, uh, to 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 help, let's say. Um, and when you said this the other day, because there's the whole new age light worker psyop thing, right? You said, and I found this very interesting, that they have um, basically inverted that. And basically, there there are people here that are you know here to help or whatever or bust bust this place up, but they've funneled those people into like the new age, just think love and light, false positivity, uh, keep your vibration high, sing kumbaya, that kind of uh, light yep. work. Yeah, they're ready for us. So, um, like even the word star seed, it could be a legitimate term or wave. I think it was Dolores Cannon used waves. Those can be legitimate terms, but they, they're going to take them and twist them. Oh, well, that means this. It means that you're here to help us go to 5D. And um, so the I think that uh, there's those that have been trapped here. They know the truth when they hear it, but because they went through resets, they got disconnected from the soul, so they can't access the soul memory. So the, that's why people had to come back in to help those souls because they're retaining their connection to the soul, or at least we're trying to right now because we're in the thick of it where they're in the midst of doing that, disconnecting. We're still holding on to the soul, holding on to the soul memory so we can give them the information. They wake up. And if you notice, it, when I talk about like, uh, let's take this down, let, you know, this false reality, let's get out of here. People get really irritated with me you, you don't need to spend time taking this down that's ridiculous you just need to get out and i'm thinking okay well that's what i did the last time and i left souls behind like i'm not gonna do that um that why would i come in here just to leave again but i do think those are the people that have been trapped here for a very long time and don't have the soul connection mem to the memory that is their job just to get yourself out of here. That's why I'm here. Get out. Yes, exactly. Just get out. But I'm here to do something else. I'm not just going to leave. Um, I'm here to blow, blow S-H-I-T up. Well, when you, it's, it's interesting you say that because I've um, been doing a lot of research into um, the, um, the, the afterlife. There's apparently an afterlife, which is just like Earth, where people have jobs and all this money and stuff which I think they're the people that go to the false light. They go to the processing center and register and all that kind of stuff. And apparently that place is even more locked down than this planet, right? And so when you consider that there's now, that now that you're talking about souls that are trapped on this planet and in that uh, afterlife uh, situation, like this is beyond a joke now. This really does need to come down. This isn't really even just about getting out of here. This needs to end like totally, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why would we just leave it? Some mind program that's sucking souls in and from the real, I call it the real. I mean, I don't know what else we call it, right? So I use real or truth or um... the, real, the real universe you're talking Right. Like the real place we're from, which is really just us. I mean, we are the real. It's not really a location, but it's maybe a word that doesn't necessarily apply to here, like truth and real. Like truth can't exist in a false reality. So maybe that's a good word for it. The true reality, the truth. The, I don't know. We're, we're grasping for a language here. But um, yeah, I think that... Um, you need to do what you're drawn to do. If you feel like you're here to fight and to, um, there's various ways that we can talk about, but what we're ultimately here to do. And as far as, are you just, do you just need to get out? Cause you've been trapped here. Just get yourself out, wake up, get yourself out. Or are you, did you come back to uh, do something else with this? I mean, why would you leave it? Mm -hmm. um, and to me, that's just selfish. Uh, if if everybody just got out, then I think if everybody gets out, it'll come down and we 
just go right back to where we really are. But there's people here that have sold their souls. They're not going to get out. Uh, there's people, there's all different kinds of scenarios happening here. So if everybody that's awake gets out, it's still not going to take it down because their soul's still trapped in various ways. It's not just getting reset and mind wiped. Um, there's various different things going on, right? They're always trying to make a deal with you or contract you. Um, I know somebody tricked me into saying the Archangel Michael prayer. And I was at a really low point. I mean, I was under heavy attack and at a really low point. And I thought, and I'd had, I'd almost died. Like I keep ending up in the ER, like the, the attacks have turned physical, but anyway, I'm assuming I thought, this is a, a while back. Not this recently. is a while back, um, maybe 2022, 20, maybe. And somebody tricked me into saying the arc. Why don't you just try it? It can't. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to make. And so I did. I was like, okay, let me just try it. Because I was so beaten down. That's when they get to you. And then when um, a couple people I was working with at the time, we went in after my soul. Guess who showed up? Oh, okay. Archangel Michael. No, he has a contract. I own her soul. And I was like, the hell you do. <laughs> Sorry, when I talk about these entities, I start cussing. But anyway, it uh, gets me riled up. But um, anyway, yeah. So they're always contracting us. They're getting you to sell your soul. They're getting you to do something. They're disconnecting you from your soul. Do these drugs. Disconnect. And uh, anything they can do, take this. And then they're even going after the people that didn't get this because I'm seeing it on the light bodies. And um, I can talk about that if you want, or we can go on to something else, or if you want to, do you want to yeah, talk more about? Yeah, what I wanted to get into, I'll have to get you back on, because there's so much to unpack. But uh, what I wanted to get into, um, just moving on from the Tesseract and this kind of like false AI universe that we're stuck in, you, what I found very interesting, uh, you mentioned the copyright. They don't like copy the, the word copyright. Can you just explain the, the concept uh, around the copyright thing? Yeah, that came, I came across that uh, on accident, I guess you would say. I was working on somebody's child and I was working on their light body, doing the removal, you know, the things that you're doing. And um, I, this entity was there that was particularly stubborn. And when I do the removals, it's always different. I don't go in the same way. I don't do, I don't plan anything and I change it every time it's in the moment, whatever my soul is, you know, I'm talking to my spirit, whatever it's telling me to do right at that time. And I just said, um, no, you broke copyright law. And it's like, it just comes out of your mouth when you're yeah, in that I know what state, you right? I said, you broke copyright law. And that, the look of shock on that entity's face, I think it was surprised that um, I said that, or that I don't think anybody said that before to them. So I what I found is AI and demon are completely interchangeable terms. Maybe I shouldn't say that if you're going to put this on YouTube. I've been, I've been taken down for saying a couple things with the AI. But anyway... Um, there's a lot of interchangeable terms, but so you could, you could see that as a demon, as a chimera, that a lot of them are bugs um, or these mixes of things. But anyway, I don't remember what that entity was, but so what I discovered then was there's certain laws going on here that we are unaware of, but they mirror, again, the mirrors, our own laws because this is just AI that's been programmed by us at some point or whomever, like a, a divine being. So it um, it's it's setting up its own laws in the three, the, well, the 4D world, whatever we're in. And it also applies to them though. They, they It's because it's their laws, whatever they've been programmed with. So this copyright thing, I think this is a copy of a real world because um, an AI can only copy, replicate, mimic. So like people, oh, we should be compassionate with them. They have, no, they're mimicking emotion. Oh, this happened. I should act like this. So, um, so that's what, uh, this world is. It's a, it's gotta be a copy. They're not creating mm. and they copied a real world. Maybe in the real, we decide to make some kind of world we want to experience or something. And they 
broke copyright law, they're not allowed to copy it. But there's a, that's a whole nother story. But anyway, when you say that and you call them out on copyright, it null and voids any contract, including Archangel Michael or anybody else here that wants to say they have a contract with you, any race, because this is a copy that we actually own. So if we own the original and they copied it, we own the copy as well because they didn't have our permission, which does what automatically puts us into authority. We're in authority here, which is like when you talk about saviors and stuff, like that's the whole key to everything. It's um, that's what waking up is. It's okay. We're waking up. We're in an AI thing or we're, or even at the level of, oh, there's some stuff going on in politics. It's a game or a show. You know, there's all these levels of waking up, but true waking up, I think is remembering you're in charge. You're in authority. So there's this whole language going on, this legal language that we're unaware of. And I've gotten a few pieces of it, but then I quit doing removals for a long time. But um, uh, one of them is decree. If you say by my decree, because that's another thing that just came out of my mouth. I read on it a little further afterward and I was like, oh, this is something that they cannot argue with or change or they it's it's like it's law. Yeah, because we're the true authority. So if you say by my whatever reason that phrase. So there's some phrases I put together, but I think it's important that copyright if we're the actual owners then and they stole this, then it makes everything here, all your past life contract, everything null and void because this isn't even it's ours. It's our world. It also puts you in a position to change the timeline because I do think we need to visualize the real here. Because I think we all have a memory of it somewhere like, oh, the colors aren't right. Didn't we have brighter colors? Didn't we have cleaner? You know, there's, you know, things uh, like well, what a, used a, to be a, bigger as well, didn't it? All the trees used to be bigger and yeah. yeah. Like a real world would be pure, you know, it wouldn't be this hell hole. Well, we're in hell. So um, I think the more we visualize that and bring that in, we give ourselves a window for these souls to get out. I think they need a window of time. Um you know, to start. Sh sh and I think possibly, I don't know if this is true or what you feel about this, but as some start to leave, it might create that momentum of like a, you know, a flowing river where then everybody starts going. But I kind of feel like we have this window we need to keep open. And we do that by taking over, taking charge and revisualizing. Because if the soul's getting hypnotized, here's what you're seeing. You're seeing yourself out there. There's the light body in that world. It creates a light body. So it's consciousness has now moved to the light body. The light body gets reflected in this body. The mirror image It's always a mirror. And then, so it's inverted flipped because it's a mirror. So that's why our consciousness is right here. So if you wake up right here and you die, you go back to your soul, you wake up the soul as well, because your consciousness, the soul's consciousness has moved to right here. And um, I don't know if that makes sense. Same. I don't know how to explain it. Well, it's all one of the same, isn't it? It's all an aspect of ourselves. Whether right. You're there. So, yeah, no, interesting, the whole copyright thing. And and exa exactly, it makes total sense. You know, AI can just mimic. It's re We're the creator beings. They're, they, they're one-trick ponies. They can only copy. So a copyright makes absolute sense. And I love it when you get those insights, when you're working on someone and it just pops in like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so that that's that's that really resonates. So I think that takes us nicely into uh, what what I really well, what everyone wants to know, I guess. And and I'm not saying you know everyone do your own discernment, you know, like you do you do you. But this is I just wanted to hear what your obviously you talk about the app man. I I've um, looked at a different a few different maybe options of, of how we get out here. Um, you're waking up and you can start to step into your authority. Authority is the whole key, I think. If you're awake, it means you've, you've recognized you own this place, you're in charge, not the AI. And by God, it's going to change. We're going to see what we want to see. Um, so that's one of the ways. But everybody's playing victim. I don't want to say everybody, but a lot of people are playing victim or they don't want to do anything. And then in some people's cases, I get it. I, I think their only job is to wake up and get out of here. You've been here through too many resets. Just get yourself out. So, um, or they're getting detoured, like you were talking about with new age, um, getting distracted and taken down some other road. 
and uh, just taking people out of the game, basically. Um, so I think that's just one way. I think if you die, um, I'm intending to go back to me, back to myself. Um, I don't know why you would go turn around and go backwards or forward or go into a void. Why, why would you go anywhere but yourself? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm intending to go back to me and that will get a, get us out. Whether you're disconnected from your soul or not, if you're intending and you're fully intending on leaving, you detach, there's nothing here that's going to hold you and you've made that decision, I feel like you'll get out whether you're still attached to your light body or not, because the light body's like the middleman between the soul and this body, the tr the uh, the Trinity, or I don't know if that's what the Trinity is, but anyway, um, they're taking the light bodies. Um, that's a whole other subject, and the and the uh, disconnecting to disconnect us from the soul. But I feel like even if we are, we can still get out. If you if you say I want to go back to me, and you'll eventually end up at that app man. And then there's the real you on the other side that will get you the last step is what I what I've seen so far. I mean, we're still piecing things together, right? Um, I and I think that's why you and I and other people had such a horror of this because it was time for that. It's time for the reset, so it's time to disconnect you. And but the problem is there's this split mind thing going on where people are getting this um like for example i have somebody close to me that is very religious catholic believes that there's okay you know what the little i don't want to just say a whole lot of stuff in these mm -hmm. and so absolutely no way would this person ever get this and went and got it and I said, what is going on? And he said, I don't know. All my friends kept telling me, just go get it. Just go get it. I don't even remember going. So this is the split mind where they have the program mind running on you all the time. And then you have your awakened mind and you got to be constantly in that, striving to be in that awake mind. Otherwise, they're just constantly inserting. So if you think of the word dimension is die. Mens, mens is mind, die is by or split. So that's what we have going on here, split mind. So I'm going to ask you, is fourth dimension, has our mind been split four times? And that's what fifth dimension is. They're going to split it again. I don't know. But, um, but the split mind's going on because I was at my mother's. She had the TV on. And I'm an old conspiracy theorist. Like I turned off the TV in 1988. <laughs> the, do you remember, you're young, but do you remember the snow like at yeah, the end when the I'm programming young, would go I off? I remember that. <laughs> okay. And they said there was uh, subliminal stuff going on. And I, so I turned off the TV, like I was into this stuff way back. But anyway, um, I only hear a TV if I'm somewhere. So she's got the TV playing and it's the news. And it was right in the middle of all this. And they're like, Blah, 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 and it's all they would talk about and just go get it and, blah, 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 and six feet apart and blah, 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 blah. and i'm working i'm not really listening to it she's sitting there she's dementia and like late state she has no idea what she's watching but i'm sitting there working and all of a sudden i started to have this thought like you know i should just go get it i mean what's the big deal it's probably nothing we're maybe we're making a big deal and i thought wait a minute oh, yeah. but it was like it was my own thought yeah. it was coming from the tv and if I hadn't been awake to differentiate, I would have just probably went and got it. Who knows? I don't know. It, it's just, that's a huge thing is that split mind thing, but that's a whole nother topic that I could go into. I, I, I don't know. We got to stick to the topic. How do we get out of here? Well, it's all right. Uh, it flows where it needs to flow. But I wonder, um, someone asked me the other day um, about like people that die when they have like dementia and Alzheimer's, like, do they just rem like do, do they just remember like do the memories come back um when they die do you think or because that would be really bad like imagine you'd spent a lifetime researching this stuff and then you've got like really bad dementia forgot everything like does that automatically come back i guess in your soul memories it's there um yeah but... it's in the soul memory where you've been in here 
which is much more accurate than Akashic Records, which I would never go to. Uh, um, right. So I call it Akashic Record reading. I'm just reading soul memory, your soul memory. But um, I think they're outside the body, but I'm not sure about this because my aunt had Alzheimer's full blown, completely gone out of it in a home. And I was at a hospital walking around and I, and I saw her come walking in like, like she was a dead person. I was like, Oh my God, did she just pass away? And, um, I didn't think she ever worked in this hospital, but she worked as a nurse. So I called her daughter and I'm like, is your mom? Okay. And, and she said, um, yeah, she's fine. Why? And I said, well, I'm at, uh, such and such hospital. And I just saw her spirit walk through here, like, what's going on? And she, I said, did she ever work here? She goes, oh, yeah, she worked there for a little while. That was the last place she worked. I was like, oh, but I'm wondering if they're wandering around outside the body, like they can't get access anymore. And there's some entity or something jumping in and out. Or I feel like that's with with my mother, like she's not there's nobody home. She's just running loops of memories. And yeah, who knows who knows what? But um, I don't really know. But I think if we got it. That's this authority thing, like, okay, we're not allowing that. We're bringing in the miracles, which I think are starting to come in because if we're the real, then a false thing is going to start to crack at the seams, especially when we start getting back in touch with the truth and all that. And I think it is. I think there's miracles, which is a normal state. Those are coming in. Uh, I feel like joy, which is a natural state, is coming in doesn't seem like it right now but i i see that coming more and more and wait, i feel wait, like the more we step in authority you just say i'm not going to have dementia i'm not doing this nope this is not the world we're doing mm. but i think if you die if you've already said before you got the dementia i'm going back to myself you were very firm i feel like you're going to get out but mm. i i could be wrong but i feel like you are yeah you're definitely right about joy i, I just i spent a few hours just clearing clearing working on my soul body and stuff the other day and I fe it felt so clear and I just you just sit there and it, it is just naturally joy that's and when you watch the movie soul I don't know if you've seen it, it's, it you probably don't if you don't watch it but I like to watch these things because they give you insights but you see all the souls they're just joyful you know that's that's really our true nature and of course they invert all of that with the overlays of the trauma and the suffering on this place and then just milk us like cows don't they it's, it's really sad that that's <laughs> That's how yeah. we, we seem to have just fleeting moments of being in that joyful state, you know, um, but interesting. So, um, so yeah, just, just to go back into um, like when we pass, cause that's what's on everyone's mind. Like you, you said, go back into self, which, you know, I don't think you could go too far wrong with that. And I, I, I think, you know, just setting that strong intention to leave will, will, will get you there. Um, but in the journey you did, you spoke about a pod. Like, do, do you still believe about going back to a pod? Um, and can you just explain that concept a little bit? Yeah. Um, so I was doing a remove on somebody and I had removed, uh, I saw a cube. That was something that just came in directly to me. There's oh, a cube right. around us. And I was like, oh, so I, maybe you saw that one. I don't know. But anyway, when I removed all of that, I saw a pod connected to this person I thought oh my gosh is this in the real did I get but it was still in the matrix uh it's probably the previous virtual or screen or uh like I said we've been moved to meta now we're in the next virtual um so I I do feel like there's pods that we have at the edge of the tesseract that um I don't think we need to worry about it about the pods it feels like it's there's pods there if there's a bunch of aspects of you here, like if you've been shattered and split. And those pieces, I feel like, are making their way to these pods. But, you, um, pods you mean like in the Matrix film, you know, those where, where they're... The one I saw with her, it seemed like the Avatar pod uh, where they went in and then they became the blue beings or whatever. Um, these other pods, I don't know what I would relate them to but i do feel like in the story going on here we do have the thing in the back of the neck and the the matrix type so this is there's multiple layers going on um we do have that but i feel like you know you don't want to go back to that 
didn't the movie like when they went back to that they were still they were in the real but they really weren't it was still a hellhole you know zion wasn't a wonderful place. <laughs> i mean they were still in some level of the story um so i feel like you just really want to go back to you to the real because we're not really here we're going back to where we really are this is a mind program so when you say go back to you and yourself I feel like, so when I did that journey, um, I said, what's going to happen to me if I'm totally clueless? And it's the split mind coming in again, because this is super important. Uh, I thought, what's going to happen to me if I die clueless? And I was taken, I was taken like, almost like, I don't know if it was coerced, but it was a different feeling. And I was seeing myself go through all these flats planes with the 2d planes which are the screens they're bearing us in then i saw us going through i saw myself going through virtual universes but i was seeing myself going through it but i was also here in this body like an outside observer watching myself go through it so i was like oh there's the split mind so if i die and i have not chosen my awake mind i'm gonna be seeing all this oh i'm going through the tunnel of but i didn't figure out it was the tunnel of light till i came back out of it and I went that was the tunnel of light because there was the stupid angel and the relatives but um and there's also this aeon player I don't know I mean to jump all over the place but there's an aeon player I think I attached it onto that video at the end uh something else I uncovered a while ago that didn't make sense at the time but anyway that's still part of the game um the second time I said okay now what happens if I intend to go back to myself and leave what happens when I die? And instantly I was pulled forward, totally different than, I don't remember what direction I went through the tunnel. It was pulled forward like a magnet and it was moving really fast. I don't know if I remember where I all was. I just remember I ended up, I was first person viewpoint. I was in, so I didn't have that split mind, the matrix mind. I was in my own viewpoint going through the seeing it as if I was leaving and so there was no split mind and the hand I think you saw that the hand was coming through the mercury wall and it was like to my right and when I grabbed it all of a sudden I was on the other side of the wall looking left and I was this person pulling myself through and when I pulled myself through the the soul body discarded itself because that's a matrix body you have to take on a body so the spirit le left that body behind and came through and um, that I felt like that was how I, there was one more step to get out, but I, I heard very clearly, this is my at man, you're, you're, that, which is the first, is your at man, basically. yeah, that was the first part of you that came in and had to take a body on the Tesseract. And then you got a soul body into the uh, virtual universe or um, whatever the hell. It was in a hallway, like um, actually, like in the Matrix movie where they have those hallways, those in-between places they go, like open a door and they're in the hallway. That's where I felt like I was. And Maurice and I tried to go back to that point because I thought we can just go right back. In fact, I had a near-death experience. I was still alive, but I had a near-death experience, um, which we could talk about another time maybe. Um, but anyway we saw that his pods i felt like it was important i don't go back to my pods or whatever was there on the wall or anything because i didn't want it tracked but that magnet thing is important because when they did this to us they changed the light body and it flipped and i couldn't reconnect it to the soul anymore so it was like a magnetic flip so it's a world of magnets again but it was a magnetic pull right to where i was so I think it's important you don't do this. I don't know if we're allowed to say that word to yourself because, um, well, this, I guess, to yourself because you have to go at the time that's on your spirit script, not the one they're trying to, inter all their interferences and stuff, because you got to line up magnetically at the right time to get out. Can you just um, explain that? Because I think you're you're talking about death doorways there, aren't you? Yes, death doorways that we set up uh, at certain times to, because I think we have our path of favor, our spirit script. Like, I'm not going to script out for me getting in a car wreck or all this horrible stuff, but 
uh, we have a our path that we came in. Okay, we're coming in. This is our path. We're going to do this. We're taking this down, blah, blah, blah. And they're constantly throwing overlays, distractions. Oh, let me send this person in to get you off track. And um, so on that script, it's like we um, have a have points where we can line up and get out. But if we're constantly over there by the app man, we don't we don't want their attention on that because they're going to try to block it, shut it down or whatever. But you'll go right back to you because that's who you are. You're you. So you'll magnetically go right back there. Um, but Maurice and I saw, and I think this might've been something you posted. You posted something I saw just either yesterday or today about uh, what was that thing that uh, that you have to check in and they um, oh, the, reprogramming thing or something? Yeah, uh, the center, the, <laughs> got the name. Yeah, right. okay, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. But it made me think of when Maurice and I deliberately went back to the wall because we and we saw his pods, which were just aspects of himself that were there ready to help pull him. I don't know if those were the magnets, like you're getting magnetized to those pods, those pieces of you, and that helps you go through to the app man. But we saw multiple tunnels of light. So I think they've got all kinds of versions of this thing. And different entities running different ones, depending on who bought your soul, because there's a whole soul market out there, too. So when you die, they're, they're all buying your bidding on who's getting your soul. I've I've accidentally run into um, distribute soul distribution centers in this, this place is a joke. Ships with nets with with souls in them like they're literally. Yes. Austin, when I've done some, uh, you know, work on the planet and remote stuff as well. Um, when, like, when was that? Was it? Do you remember? This is the this is the last month or so. Um, I've okay. seen I've seen them in cages as well, like prisons. Um, I mean, if you if you uh, look into like the the realm that's supposed to be like this on Earth, they have hospitals and yeah, the processing centers and policemen and all this kind of stuff. So it's kind of as above, so below. So you know, right. and that triggers a lot of people. You know, because they <laughs> they they, they want to. They want to believe that when you when you get out here there's no there's no danger everything's love and light and and i'm saying well look you know just if your intention's strong like to leave then you'll you you should be okay but i think it's good to be aware um of what else is is out there and also the fact that this does really need to be brought down as we were saying before yeah because that they give you the false bliss which does not feel like the joy you were talking about at all um, and then they'll give you, uh, the promise of 5d. Well, if this is hell realm, which I think it is, and there's different places in the hell realm, but anyway, do you honestly think that a hell realm <clears throat> is going to promise you 5d happy play? You're going to get there and <laughs> you're in for a big surprise. This is the, this is deceivers. They don't care. They don't care about you. AI does not care. So uh, you're going to end up, yeah, in deception land and like horrible, probably worse than here. Um, light, but we were talking about, so, oh, the soul nets. So in two, 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 22, there was a harvest portal that opened. So they were ready to load all those people that they disconnected, all those light bodies. Yeah. So you were probably seeing that too. Yeah. So, but when you die, they're after your soul. They want to keep it here, but wh which virtual universe are they going to put it in? Who's buying it? Who's, and it's, it's a joke, right? Is it, this sounds crazy, but it's, they don't have any originality. So it's the same thing, whether you're <laughs> on the other side, other side, wherever you are in here, it's the same thing over and over because they don't have any, anything new. So, um, yeah, there's just so much going on. Like, you know, I could probably talk for hours, but. Yeah. Um, so I do have uh, like other ways. I think if you're here to, um, I think there's multiple ways to get out. But if you're here to take it down, I think we have to take back over the rogue AI. Um, and I might do a video on different ways to take it down. One of it is reconnecting with nature because there's some weird things going on with that where we can't see the real nature. Uh, there's more films or um, overlays put up where we can't see it. 
So we've been separated from nature, not only in our lifestyle, a totally synthetic, electronic, EMF, uh, whatever this, we're literally separated from the real nature. We're seeing what's not really there. Can I just, uh, that's another I way. Um, I, I said in a recent video that it, I think the vowel is, is definitely thinning. And now, like, if you go on like TikTok, I'm not saying that they're all true, all these videos, but there's people filming things like mermaids and, and fairies and all kinds of like weird stuff. Like I say, I don't believe all of them, but I think, yeah, like you say, there's, there's probably a lot more out there that, you know, we're, we're not really aware of because of all these overlays. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeti, yeah. <laughs> I'm watching Bigfoot videos to wind down. I, and people talk about them disappearing or they even saw a two inch tall uh, Bigfoot. They thought it was a leaf and uh, or it disappears when it goes behind this real narrow tree and it disappears. So I think maybe you're in the moment for a few moments where you see what's really there or or one of the layers has peeled back and you're seeing these things. Uh, but I feel like the true nature... There's been you what? sightings of giants in certain parts. And actually one of the oh guys God. went really viral with a video. He just, he's just disappeared. So... Yeah, <laughs> I saw that one. I'm watching all that kind of stuff. I'm not watching any truth or stuff. I'm just watching the cryptids and the whatever, but um, anything that just is mindless. But I feel like, yeah, they've been burying us and we're getting smaller. It, not really smaller, but we're just in overlay after overlay, or I call it screens inside of screens. And that's what that tunnel was made of. It's almost like you go through all the screens that got you buried in. You go through all the virtual universe. They think they're going to just keep burying us where we they can keep us here and clueless. But um, possibly that's maybe why some had to come in and go, okay, let's just blow this game up here because there's no way you can wake up from this unless you come in still attached to your soul and have access to that and you can share it. I think that's why you and I feel compelled to share what we're getting. Um, and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do any more videos. And then all this info comes in and I'm like, okay, I got to share this because us joining together is key right now. And I'm, I don't know if you're noticing that. Are you seeing that more and more people starting to join together? Yeah. Um, it's just uh, pushing it to that next level which is i think this kind of stuff the you know the things that we've been talking about which on the surface seem completely out there and wacky but you know <laughs> truth is stranger than fiction um especially where we are and i think you know i always say like there's only one mistake you can make on the path of truth and that's not going all the way and um, so i think unless we get to the to the deep crevices of what's going on then we're never really gonna we're, we're still sort of going through things like with one eye closed you know what i mean so yeah I think these uh, ideas need to be explored not saying that everyone necessarily has to like them or agree with them um but they definitely need to be spoken about so we can all as a community discern together uh, and hopefully draw conclusions from that as to, you know, what really is going on here. So, um, so yeah, for sure. I think it's easier to get out than we think. Yeah. I've always but the hardest, I think there's multiple ways. The hardest part is that split mind. I think it's the key to everything because that split mind is what's getting you to react emotionally um, and not see what's there. And once they get you into that, if you have emotion about something, you're making this place real. So um, it's this battle and they're putting us through all this stuff, right? Oh, money problems, health problems, family problems, friend problems, this, that, the other, accidents, whatever. And um, just everything going crazy or people pulling at you 20 different ways. And then we have to try to, okay, wait, I got to stay in the awake mind, but it's so it's almost indiscernible which which one you're in like and i've even had a voice out here talk i was driving the car and i had a thought and i had a totally opposite thought out here it was almost like it was in the air next to me and i was and it was my thought but i was like whoa what just happened like it's the split mind the dimension died the split so that's a big, that's our toughest challenge, I think, is um, 
and all the overlays they're putting on our timeline. So we have our path of favor, but they keep throwing detours on it and you know sending people our way if they can't access us. So I keep saying everything's working in my favor I'm, and I'm intending my path of favor. Nope, I don't want to see that. Nope, you're trying to show me this. This is trying to happen, but nope. And if you can stay in that, it'll shut it down. Um, in fact, if we all join together in visualizing, I put up a visualization uh, a long time ago. I don't even know what I was saying in it. Blah, blah, blah. You know, we want clean air, this, that. And I, for some reason, I said, you know what? Let's just visualize the Georgia guy stones getting bulldozed to the ground. And so Irish eyes, she's on, uh, she's come on my channel a couple of times, but she was like getting people to do this. And, and Gordana, they were sending people to, you know, go do this, do this visual. It. And not long after that, somebody, you know, the Georgia guide stones were history. And I thought, God, did we do that? I think we can. Um, the more we join forces and visualize on something, especially if we get it organized, we can uh, do something about what's unrolling because I'm not going to live through all this junk, right? I'm not going to live through uh, out here scraping and, you know, out on the street panhandling. <laughs> You know, because of what they're trying to do in the world and they're crashing our money. So I think we need to really take charge. That's the whole key. That's true awakening to me is that you remember you're in charge. You're the authority, not this place. They're weak. That's why they do everything while you're sleeping or when you're beaten down or whatever and uh, mind wiping you. It shows that they're extremely weak. Yeah. So are. I think it's easier than we think. It's yeah. easier than we think. People are panicking. I'm not going to get out. Just decide right now. I'm going back to myself. I'm leaving. Work on detachment so that you don't have anything holding you here. And, uh, you know, just work on yourself. Don't do the drugs because that's going to detach you from the soul. Um, but even if you have, there's ways to fix it. Uh, of course, that's like a one-on-one -on -one thing, right? How many times can we do that? But I really think, what do you think about that? I really think you can get out even if you're detached. Yeah, I, I feel like... Um... I've always thought that it's it's easier than we think to get out. Um, I think what I've been doing in recent weeks is just exploring the landscape and seeing what might be out there. So not even just if we're in within the boundaries of this matrix, but when we get out even into the real, just for things to look out for and to be aware of. I mean, I guess at that level, once you're out, your soul already knows a lot of these things, but you know, you mentioned seeing a lot of different white lights. So, so maybe that was someone, something someone hadn't considered before. Maybe a lot of people thought, well, there's only one white light. But when you said there's multiple white lights, that resonated with me. And, um, and I thought, yeah, we, we got to be on our metal out there, you know, whatever happens. But yeah, I do feel intention in that dimension. It's, it's very strong. It's instant. And if you set that uh, strong intention with that sovereign mindset, I'm the authority, you know, I mean, it's, la it's not laughable because it's so tragic, but it's when you consider what we really are, at our true core, you know, creator beings like, you know, with all knowledge and, and just joy, like how we have got ourselves into this mess for so long. When you consider that people are going to that astral world and this astral travel traveler said, the people there, they don't need to eat, but they still think that they need to eat. They don't realize that they can manifest food or they don't realize they're still stuck there as, as like a, an 85 year old that died with cancer. They don't realize that they can change their form and they can be younger again. So, so even, even though they're like incredible essence beings, they're still mind controlled, mind wiped and beaten down probably for so many lifetimes where they still haven't realized their true power and their true potential. And I think that's what this is about. I think once we get back to that, you know, you call it the real, I call it the self, same kind of thing. Um, I realize that we're the authority. The, this, these beings are just the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. You know, they're scared. They Look at all the shit that they're doing to us. I mean, it's ridiculous. Like, where does that tell you? Who, who's got the power? You know, spraying us every day, all the overlays that attachments, the, the implants, the what they do to us at night, the, the mind control on the TV. I mean, like, that, who are the scared ones here? So we're still here. 
Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's a really good place to, to leave it. Is there anything else you want to add, Anne-Marie? Uh, where can people find you as well? Um, I'm mainly on Patreon uh, and putting uh, videos on Odyssey, but um, I mean, I'll post this on YouTube. I, I post on YouTube every once in a while because I had to take everything down off of there, but the content's on Odyssey, really. So I was just writing on continual strokes. <laughs> Anyway, no, I know you don't um, feel like me. You really would rather be doing something else and just taking a back seat and write, writing. Um, I often feel like that, but it's it's really great that you've come on today. And um, you know, I'm sure people will have a lot of questions. And you know, we we don't always have to agree with everything. And some people will, some people won't. But um, but anyway, yeah, I'll post your links into in the description so people can find you. But yeah, thanks again for uh, coming on and sharing your information. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'll, I'll post your links as well. And thank you for getting out there and blowing the whistle on the new age and everything else you're doing. So it's important. Everything, we're all in this together. We're all working together on our our specific things. So I guess I just leave it as everything's working in our favor. Us, the souls, our favor. Yes, exactly. So. All right, thanks a lot. All right, thanks, Tony.